Fighter Share Report. I'm here with the champ, Mr. Austin No Doubt Trout. Man, thank you for the interview. Hey, now, thanks for having me, bro. I mean, we were talking earlier, and I, I really didn't express really how proud I am to see you in front of the camera as well. Um, it, it's amazing just the, the the way you're able to hang your, handle yourself as a commentator. Uh, well, thank you, man. Let me tell you, it ain't easy. I think I think boxing is easier than having to speak in front of the camera. But, you know, I love it. I love boxing. I love talking about boxing. So, you know, I think it's a great fit. It's my second favorite job. Now, how did you get into this game? Uh, I just want to thank Al Heyman and Al Heyman Boxing. He, he threw me the alley-oop, man. It was, it was really a, a good assist. And I've, I've seen you, I mean, just listening to you watch and bounce, it, it, you seem you've grown leaps and mountains. I mean, you were already good when you came in. But now it's like you're not looking for somebody else to set you up. You've taken command fully of the broadcast, and it's amazing to see an athlete be able to do that. I wanted to commend you on that. You know what? Thank you, man. You have been watching. Yeah, you've definitely been watching. It's all just the experience, getting, getting more reps. I'm feeling more comfortable. Um, but working with, you know, a great professional like Franz Charles, he really – Helps me feel comfortable, you know, and, and when we're doing it. But I hope I could do this forever, you know, because uh, this is something I like to pursue after boxing. Well, I mean, it, 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 as long as you keep fighting the way you are, right. the face will stay intact, and you'll <laughs> definitely be able to do it. Because I mean, not many fighters leave with all their teeth, and I say you got them all. Or their marbles, you know, they they lose those cat eyes, you know, in the ring. Speaking of in the ring, mm -hmm. your last fight. Um, Championship fight, I still feel that you won. You, you, you won that fight. So I, I won't belabor it, but do you want to expound upon that at all? I, I agree with you in the feeling. That night I felt like I won that fight. I came home. I didn't want to watch it. You know, it took me about a week and a half, and my coach, you know, kept telling me, you got to watch that fight, man. So I finally watched it, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I won the fight anymore. I know I won that fight. But it was a good fight. You know, the fans got a good, good uh, entertainment out of it. That's what we're here for. Um, I didn't lose in the sense that it's being defeated. Uh, but I didn't get my belt that I feel like I deserve. So, you know, shout out to Charlo. He fought a good fight. He's a tough cookie. He's going to be a good champion. And, and, and the more, the better he does, the better I look too. So, you know, I hope he has plenty of success until I get my rematch. So my question is, did you feel like you were fighting a 154 guy? <laughs> Absolutely not, man. That dude is big. But he made the weight. And, you know, for the IBF, they make you come in and weigh them next morning. You can't be 10 pounds over. So he made both weights. There was no cheating involved and nothing like that. The scales weren't fixed. He was actually weighed under me. But that night, my man was, was a good light heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw it. I saw it. Um... <sighs> What was, your, what was your amateur career? I should know this off the top of my head, but I forgot. I had, um, I was an Olympic alternate in 2004. Right. So, you know, Vinus Marcherosian, you know, shout out to him. I'm going to see him. He, he beat me to be the Olympian. I was an alternate. Uh, you know, I had, I had a good amount of fights. I only had one national tournament, though, that I won. That was the, that was the qualifier to make it to the, the, the Olympic trials. Okay. Now, my, this, I'm setting up another question. Yeah, yeah. We had a, a, a dispute on the Fighter Share Report where I made the statement that I believe the NCAA should go back to sanctioning amateur boxing so amateur boxers can earn scholarships and go to college. What are your feelings on that? Who would, who would ever vote against that, though? That sounds like a great idea. You know, the, and it also would give the amateurs kind of a fan base. You know, having the NCAA behind them, they're going to put them out and promote them. I think that's a great idea. Who would ever vote against that? Have you seen the guy who co-hosts the show with me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we won't talk about the Badger right now. Uh, <laughs> what's next for Austin No Doubt Trout? I don't know, man. You know, I'm uh, going to be back in the gym, get ready for whatever. I'm, I'm, I want to hit him right back in the head. I don't want to, you know, have to go back and, and, and take the journey or anything like that. I will if I have to. I'll do whatever it takes to get back to my belt, which I feel like I deserve. Um, I'm not done. I'm not close to done. And, and everybody in the 154-pound weight class knows it, that I'm still here and I'm not going nowhere.
I mean, you still are the, the, the standard barrier. When I, when I interview other people in that weight class, your name comes out first. It really does, even before um, Mr. Charlo. Um, I really have to ask you a serious question. With the passing of Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, how has his life, inside the ring, outside the ring, affected you and your career in boxing? I mean, he showed me, and my mother really put me on Ali when I was young. And, and he showed me, like, believe in yourself before anybody else does, and you can do whatever you feel like you, you believe in. And in one statement he said, you know, I, I kept saying the champ that I was a champ or I was the best before I even knew it. And, you know, just the confidence and, and self-belief, it shows that you could do anything. My man Muhammad Ali went all over the world. He fought the best of the best, the best of the, of, you know, some of the greatest of all times, beat some of the greats of all times, freed 15 hostages in Iraq, you know, talked a man off a building. This is stuff that legends, legends are, are about, and the confidence he had in himself and, and in his spirituality, it really, um, he broke the mold of, of what a champion is inside and out. And he really broke the mold of what, what the people's champ is. Wow. That's profound. Yeah, that's my man. Um, since you had the liberty of sitting and watching the fights tonight, can you comment a little bit on the Biggie Boy um, LaGreco fight? What a fight. Both guys were hurt. Nobody went down, but <laughs> they both should have. Um, man, what a fight. And, and, you know, Bounce, they always have good cards. I haven't seen a bad card yet. And, and this one was no, was, was no exception. Now, uh, do you think the judges got it right? It was so close, you know, and some of those rounds was up in the air. Yes, it was a close fight, and really it could have gone either way, depending on how you looked at it. LeGreco outworked Biggie Boy, but Biggie Boy had the, the cleaner shots. Um, I would have been okay with a draw, but, but you know, it wasn't like the, the scorecards were all over the place. It was like one or two points. Away. So, yeah, yeah, they got it right. Now, we had a draw before that fight, and everybody in the arena was looking around like, draw? So, so I'm coming to you on this one. I was okay with that draw, too, to be honest. It, it was really close fight. Um, you, uh, I, I was saying his name the whole fight, too, now. You, you, yeah, Kazan. He, he was aggressive. Um, but, but Lee had some of the cleanest shots, you know. And it was, it was, it was pretty even to me, man. Okay. I thought it was even. This, this, this last group, and I'm going to let you go, champ, because I know you've had a long day. Um, when we look at the state of boxing today, mm -hmm. and we look at the social media, the instant success, right. um, we had a discussion as far as fighters in the top ten. Should they have to mandatory, have mandatory fights against other fighters in the top ten, like at least two fights a year? Since you're a highly ranked um, fighter, is that something that you would be in agreement with, or do you believe that they should not have to fight other fighters in the top ten? No, I think they should have to fight. I'd be, I mean, that'd be great. I, um, I would love that. The thing though is, is two times a year. Some of us are only fighting two times a year, you know. So, so at least once a year, I say it would be a little bit more manageable. But I, I'd be all for it. Okay, champ. I thank you. I thank you very much for giving us this interview. Thank you, man. I say God bless you. How can we follow you on social media? We already see you on TV and in Magic Mike 3, Magnum, Triple XL. Yep. Right. Yeah. He's going to be the star. It's, it's called Step Up to the Mic. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they pushed Channing Tatum on the mouth and said that we need some more color in there. It's like, all right, man. <laughs> he said, I got a lot of color for you. Got it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my wife's going to kill me. Um, <laughs> how can we follow you on social media, champ? At No Doubt Trout on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, No Doubt Trout across the board. Anything you'd like to say to the Fighter Share community on the way out? Hey, I love y'all. I appreciate the support. You know, you're going to see me back hitting the head, the top guys. I'm not, I'm not going back to the tail. And if I do, I'll beat them all the way up to the head. You got me? Appreciate it, champ. Austin, No Doubt Trout, Magic Mike, Magnum, Triple XL, Color in the Build. <laughs>